What's going on everyone? My name is B. Paula from Pipeline and I'm going to be showing you guys the best settings for OBS for recording and streaming. Let's go ahead and dive right into it. Now, assuming you guys have OBS already installed, we're going to head over to the file up in the top left hand corner and then we're going to go to settings. Then we're going to go to the stream tab on the left hand side and then we're going to go over to services. This is going to be where you can pick whatever streaming service you use and you can log into your account. This will automatically go ahead and put in your stream key. So you don't have to worry about that. If you don't have a login or you're streaming on a platform that doesn't allow logging in, just find the stream key and then make sure you connect it to the account. Once your account is connected, let's go ahead and head over to the output. Now, once we head over to output, we're actually going to have an output mode. We're going to go ahead and stick with advanced over simple because advanced gives you more fine tuning so we can get the best quality out of our system. Now, for the audio track, we want to go ahead and just leave it at one. And then for the Twitch VOD track, just leave that unchecked. Now, when it comes down to the encoder, this is really going to depend on what graphics card you have. If you have a graphics card that is 1660 Ti and above, you then have what's called the NVENC encoder built into your graphics card. This will actually allow a portion of the graphics card that is sectioned off to encode whatever video source you're using and streaming with. If you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card that supports NVENC, don't worry about it. We're actually going to be going over X264, which is software encoding, right after this. Now, for reskill output, we're actually going to leave this alone because we're actually going to change this in a different tab. This is actually going to be changed in the video tab. So, leave this unchecked for now. Now, once we come down to the actual rate control, we want to leave this at CBR, which stands for constant bit rate. The reason why this is important is because if we keep it a consistent bit rate, it means our quality will not fluctuate. Now for bit rate, we're going to need two different values. To find these two values, the first thing you want to do is to do a speed test. The speed test is actually going to tell you what your upload speed is going to be. For instance, if you have a 10 megabit upload speed, that means you can utilize up to 10 thousand kilobit per seconds for a bit rate. Now the second value is going to be what your actual platform supports for a maximum bit rate. For instance, Twitch actually allows up to a 6,000 kilobit a second bit rate. So that means you can only set your value up to 6,000. So assuming you're able to meet that criteria, let's go ahead and use 6,000 bit rate. Now that we set our bit rate, we're actually going to go down to the keyframe intervals. Here we're going to leave this at two. And basically what this does, it means that every single second frame is then being encoded by the computer. Now, if you set this any lower, it's going to decrease the actual quality of the image. And if you set this any higher, it will then start to chew through your system resources. So leave this at two. It's definitely the sweet spot for this one. Now we're going to go down to preset. And for preset, this is basically how fast we want to encode our image. The faster we encode the image, the worse the quality is going to be, but the less system resources we will use. And then the slower we actually encode it, we are going to use more system resources, but the better the image will look. For this, you definitely want to find a happy medium. I find that slow works perfectly fine for me. So let's go ahead and pick five. And then when we come down to tuning, we actually want to set this to high quality. The reason why is because we want to have a high quality image versus a low latency delivery. So if we have a lower latency delivery, the image might not be as clear when we're sending it up to the streaming platform. Now we're going to come down to multi-pass mode. Essentially what this is, is how many times the encoder is going to go over the image. If we do a single pass, it's going to decrease the quality of that image. If we do a two pass at full resolution, it is going to weigh heavily on our system resources. So we want to go ahead and put that at two pass with quarter resolution to get the best look out of it. Now we come down to profile. We actually want to set this to high. And the reason why is it's going to use the most efficient compression for whenever you are live streaming your videos and or recording. So we come down to look ahead. We actually want to go ahead and leave this unchecked because if we do check it, it is then going to use the maximum amount of GPU resources that it can which we want to be able to limit it in the max B frames down here. So leave that unchecked for now. Then once we come down to psycho visual tuning, this is actually going to help with high movement encoding. So if you play any video game, it's going to have high movement. So you want to make sure we have this checked. Then we're going to come down to GPU and we're going to set that to zero. Essentially, this is only if you're running an SLI configuration on your system. Then we're going to go ahead down to max B frames. We're going to leave this at two. If we use this any higher, it's going to start utilizing your bit rate, which then will leave less room for the actual upload, which decreases the quality of your image. Then if you don't have a GPU that supports NVENC, let's go ahead and change the actual encoder settings to X264. You're going to see a lot of similar settings that we actually went over. So again, for rate control, we want constant bit rate. And then we're going to go ahead and change the bit rate to 6,000. We want our keyframe intervals back to two. We're going to use medium. Again, this is your encoding speed. So go ahead and use medium. And then for your profile, we want the best compression. So we're going to use high and then that's it. You can go ahead and hit apply and hit OK. And this is going to be the best settings for your software encoding. Now, once we're done setting our settings, we're actually going to go ahead over to the audio tab right up here. Now, with the audio bitrate, you can just leave it at 160 as it has a minimal impact. If you are streaming on Twitch, you do have the option to go up to 320 for the bitrate. Now, let's say you might be having some trouble streaming at 1080p or you play a game like Apex where there's a lot of movement and you want to go ahead and decrease the resolution. We're going to jump over to the video tab on the left hand side, and this is where we can actually do that. Make sure you do not touch your base canvas as you always want to have it as 1080p or whatever your regular resolution is. 
the output scale, you wanna go ahead and use this to downscale your resolution. So if I wanna stream in 720, then I would actually go down all the way to 720. Now, when you set your output resolution to a low resolution, you actually have this downscale filter. You can either go with Bicubic or Lancos. I just prefer to use Bicubic as it is a standard compression and gives you really good quality for what you're doing. And then for FPS, we wanna go ahead and stream in 60 FPS as most video games and most streams are 60 FPS. And then once you set that value, you're done. You can come down here and hit apply and okay. Now you're ready to stream. If you guys have any questions or if you want to let us know how these settings worked out for you, make sure you guys leave them in the comment section down below. And if you guys like that video, be sure to watch our next one. Also, if you guys want to join Pipeline and learn how you can become a full-time content creator and get access to a bunch of tools, tips, and also mentorships, make sure you guys check out the link in the description below and we'll see you inside. Once again, my name is B. Paula from Pipeline. Make sure you guys go create something awesome.